Welcome to a special edition of Crawford County Outdoors. We're actually indoors today and we're in Titusville um, and we're joined by Bill Howard, the president of Great, now let me say it right, Great Eastern Cutlery. That is correct, yes. Give me a little history. Uh, tell me about the company. Uh, we actually have been in business since 2006. We moved into this building in August, 1st of August actually of 2006. Uh, the building was basically empty. We did a lot of cleaning. We brought in all this equipment that you've seen or will see during the, the, the program and started from scratch. Now, personally, I've been in cutlery making since okay. 1975. Uh, decided I'd like to do it on my own, and we decided to start this company. How do you decide? I mean, uh, our, our outdoor series, we have hunting trips, fishing trips. We haven't done any camping, but it seems like everybody outside at some point needs a knife. How do you decide what the products are like, what, what kind of products the customers are going to need? Well... What we specialize in here are old time traditional pocket knives. Now, okay. if you should do any research on that, you'll know that there are literally hundreds of different pocket knife designs that were made over the years. So we have a lot to choose from, and that's basically what we do is we uh, reproduce old designs. And then we also do hunting knives also, which uh, not nearly as many pocket knives, but quite a few hunting knives also. Now I looked at the website and you have quite a, a very interesting variety of knives that, that are different colors and different materials, it looks like it's on the handles and so on. Um, how, do you, you know, how do you sort that out? How do you figure out which well, ones are going to be the... Again, we try to stay as, as traditional okay. as possible, and that would involve using bone handles and stag handles and some of the exotic woods, as you'll see coming up. Del uh, ebony and cocoboa and so on and so that has a lot to do with what dictates how we make the knife itself and again staying with the tradition we use traditional carbon steels 1095 carbon steel okay. because that's was common for the knives made back in the early 1900s business question for you Crawford County, uh, I think of Meadville and the, mostly in Crawford County about the tool, you know, the, the tool capital. Um, do you find skilled workers that, that do, I'm, I'm sure you got, you know, we're going to look at some of your operations here shortly, but do, can you find the kind of workers you need to do that work? Well, actually, it's pretty difficult to find people who are skilled in the cutlery industry, especially in this day and time. So whoever I hire, uh, as long as they have a good mechanical background, I can teach them to do the most basic operations and then they learn from there. Now there is quite a bit of skill and you'll see that in the, in the videotaping. Uh, so over a period of time they become quite skilled. Now how's it going? I mean you've been in business here since 2006. How's it going? Uh, it's going quite well. Uh, you know we have our ups and downs just like any other company but we're still here. Uh, we've maintained a workforce over the last five years. It's been pretty steady. Uh, we're looking at possibly hiring uh, and we're looking at, uh, at always changing to, to grow with, with the situation. Well, is it right if we kind of follow you through and maybe we, we look at the products and so, see some of the behind the scenes that makes it happen? By all means. Hey, while, while, we're, while we're getting started with that, um, if someone wanted to come and take a tour, is that something they could do? Yes, we give tours on a daily basis. Now, we're usually here Monday through Friday, just like any other factory. And if somebody should walk in, we'll give them a tour. And it's very interesting, actually. You'll see that. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how a knife gets made. All right, Matt has a sheet of 072 carbon steel that he's going to shear a strip off right now. Going to return it to the bin, and the strip is down in behind here. So that strip will then ultimately become a knife blade. Exactly. All right, now he's ready to punch the blades out. He takes a strip of steel that he sheared in the press over here, and he's going to punch a couple parts for us. These are the punched out blades from the 072 carbon steel. This particular blade is called a coping blade. The blade has the blades and he's going to put the stamp in the tag. 
go ahead and wait. We just go ahead and put it away. We have a small press where your plane puts the plane against the picture and locates it exactly every time. Would you show them the stamps, please? I, I'm not one to wear glasses. What does that say? <laughs> Across the top, it says Great Eastern and Cutlery underneath there. Okay. And Across the middle, it says TIW, which stands uh -huh. for Titusville Ironworks. Very good. Very good. Thank you. All right. You. Now we're going to go to the nail marker and mill the nail mark in. So that's how you can put your. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Now we're ready to, to mill the nail mark in. That part where you catch your you catch your thumb to yes, open sir. the blade, okay? Uh, he's got a little fixture on the mill here that he locates the blade in. And after he's got it located, he'll crank the table over and mill into the blade. What he's doing is he's viewing a dial indicator right there, and when it gets to zero, that tells him when to stop. Exactly. Yeah, sure. There's a little bit of oil being dripped on it to keep it cool at the same time. Okay, so when I go to open the knife, that's the place that I catch a hole. That's yeah. called a nail mark. Now after we get done nail marking, we'll take the job right behind us here and we'll drill the hole in the tank. We're sitting here getting ready to drill the tank. Blaine has a, a fixture here where we can locate the blades precisely. There's a drill bit in there. He's going to load the blade and adjust the table up to drill the blade. Go ahead, Blaine. Thank you. So that's going to make the hinge. I mean, that's going to make the pivot point for that hinge. Yes, sir. Go ahead and do the other one, please, Blaine. You control that table with your foot. Is that how that works? That is controlled by the foot. Yes, sir. This is Betty. She makes our scales. That's the liner that holds the knife together. Go ahead, Betty. That looks like brass. Is that That's good? brass, yes, sir. Okay, Betty. This is what the part looks like after she cuts it off. So this, so the blade will be in between two layers of. Yes. Now she's ready to assemble the bolster to the brass. Go ahead, Betty. She places a bolster in a forming die, and then she lays the brass on there, and now she's going to clinch it. All right. Do another one, please. So that's now we have a bolster attached. So that's actually going to be the outside surface of the end where the hinge is. That is correct, yes. Does that little pin become part of the operation on the inside or no? That's separate. Uh, that's separate. That's riveting to hold the bolster on, and you won't see that when the knife is together. Okay. Now Betty's ready to put the other end on. Go ahead, Betty, please. This is the exact same operation as she previously did. So those are the those are the two the two ends. Of, okay, I get it. The two ends of the knife. And you need that twice for both sides of the knife, right? If it's got two ends, we have to do it twice. Yes.
So ultimately, these will be like that? In some cases, yes, it's like that. But in this case, we have different. to make an entirely different side for it. Now we're ready to trim the excess off around to make an actual scale. Go ahead, Betty. She loads the part into the die and trims it. There's your finished scale. It's beginning to look like a knife. Well, it's partially there. Okay. Now we're ready to mark the scale, which puts the locating pins, or the locations for the pins to assemble the knife. Go ahead, Betty. doing now is punching the holes for the handles and then marking the bolsters or the pins the marks for the bolster so holes. So ultimately there'll be rivets in these. Yes there holes. will be. Okay. Yes. Okay Dwayne after we finish the blades in the fabrication room where we milled in the nail mark and drilled the holes and stamped them. They've gone to heat treat over at Peter's Heat Treat in Meadville. Now they're back and we're ready to start removing the heat treat scale off the tang of the blade and that's what Billy's gonna do right here. So the metal, the metals by the heat treatment's been made stronger and if you sand part of it off, grind part of it off, it's still gonna be stronger inside. Yes, sir. It's if it's done way, correctly it's and cooled, it, it will be okay. okay. What he's doing is taking the blade and placing it on a little steady and then pinching it between two fiber wheels which have a grit compound in them and re that removes the scale from the surface of the blade. Now that generates a lot of heat because of the friction sure. and so we got to be very careful touching because they'll get burnt almost immediately on them. Now we're ready to grind the blades. Now they've been double headed over there on a double header. Bob here is going to place the blades in a fixture on this side of the Nicholas grinder to grind half the taper on the blade. Go ahead, Bob. So that's a two step process. You grind one side and then you're going to separately grind the other side. And this is to get that, that shape to get that, that blade. tapered edge. Yes, sir. That's what he's going to do. He loads the blade into the fixture and the table, he engages the table and it goes into a stop and a grinding wheel comes in against the blade and grinds half of it off. Now after he takes the blade out of that side, he brings it over here and loads it in an opposite fixture and does the exact opposite thing on the other side of the blade. We got a right hand machine and a left hand machine. That is what we have, yeah. See a lot of water that's keeping that operation cool? That's what it's doing. It comes out of a small tank that we have below here. Here you see one side ground, the other side ground. The finish is like a, a fine nail file finish. And there are several operations after that to get it to a final finish. Okay. I see those marks you put on there before very clearly. That's your, your tang stampings on the tang, the nail mark, and obviously the hole in the tang. Dwayne, 
now that we've ground the blades, we have to shape this point protector off the point. That's what Billy's going to do right here. Okay. That'll get that final shape of that blade exactly the way you want it. Yes, and these guys know exactly what we want, so it's very important that they shape them right to the exact point that we need. that he doesn't overheat the point. You can see the sparks here, yeah. that's, that's from the heat. So he's gotta be careful that he doesn't burn it and change the temper of the blade. There you have your pointed blade. we pointed the blades, we're ready to what we call double head the taper of the blade. Now we have the on there cutting, now. The actual cutting surface, the actual yes. the final, okay. We, we have a fine, roughly a fine nail file finish on there. We want to smooth that up a little bit more. Plus, we're going to make our edge a little bit better too. Okay. Go ahead, Billy. Now he grabs each blade with a pair of vice grips so that he can hold on to them firmly because there's quite a bit of pressure right here when he places a blade between those two wheels. First he works on thinning the point down because that's usually the thickest part of the blade that we can't really squeeze down on the grinder. We have two round wheels coming like this so it's very important how, how close to that, to that part that he has, how close the part is to where those those two wheels are close together. Yes. You get that exact taper that you want there. He's got to inspect every blade and he, he pulls them a number of times until he determines that he's got the right thickness of the blade. And along with that, we have to inspect them to make sure we're getting a good finish on them. And as he, he can control the how close together those wheels are by a control of his foot there. Is that what I'm saying? The amount of foot pressure that he places on the pedal. So you got a lot of things to be thinking about all at the same time in these, in these operations here. Again, you can see the amount of heat that's built up. He places on the, the wheel a little bit of lubricating grease to keep the, the to keep them a little bit cool and, and reduce the friction. See a little steam coming off that one when it's finally done. Yes. So, yeah. so now give us that final that final nice sharp edge. Is there any more sharpening yes. that happens before it goes to the customer? Now, if we wanted to, we could polish this, which is done in this machine over here to our left. That would put on what we would call a mirror polish. All right. This is what we call a satin finish right now. Okay. And you can see that he's got this edge down pretty close to where we want to be. You can see. You can see if we look at it just straight from that side. Here's where it started, and here's where it is now. So you can see yeah. where those grind, those grinding and polishing operations. Are. Taking it. 